The other day I saw a film, a film called Velvet Buzzsaw. I have long stated that I am a massive horror fan, and because of my horror fandom, I tend to be a little harder on horror movies because uh, I love them so much, I want them to be done well, and when they're mediocre or cheap, I get upset. So, and that is certainly the element of Velvet Buzzsaw that falls apart, because as much as I like the kind of critique on criticism, um, it, and certain, certainly it is, it is heightened, and it does come across as like sort of, sort of uh, childish and kind of petty, uh, and it's maybe it is, maybe it is, maybe it isn't on the part of Dan Gilroy. I don't know. I couldn't say for sure, but it could certainly be interpreted that way. The way in which the horror elements are added. I think are really the weakest part of the film. I, I felt there were two ways they could have gone with Velvet Buzzsaw uh, in terms of the horror elements, because I think having that kind of takedown of criticism and critics as a whole, I think is warranted, and I think can be done well, and having the backdrop be a horror movie I also think can work well, but it's got to mean something. I was expecting one of two things. I was expecting either A, the artwork that comes to life to kill the various cannon fodder of the film, I thought was going to be... I thought it was going to be like a Silent Hill thing where the monsters are sort of related to their hang-ups or, or transgressions of the past, something to that effect. And that's not what they did. Um, they didn't do that. Uh, for example, I thought one thing I would have done is I would have done... I would have had Jake Gyllenhaal's character, Morph Wartortle, who is the critic, I would have had his thing be like, okay, he likes a very specific set of things, but he does, all of his reviews are of stuff he clearly doesn't like anyway, and he's just giving these scathing reviews because that's what people expect of him. And, you know, whatever piece of artwork comes to life that kills him is from something that he likes. Like, I think that could be, like, an interesting thing, is like, uh, well, you spent your you spent so much time only liking one thing. You never broadened your horizons, and now that one thing has turned on you. Like that could have been an interesting thing, but they didn't do that. The other thing I thought it was going to be would be the much much less symbolic and much more straightforward. The artwork that comes to life is the work of the sort of tormented artist, um, but that didn't happen either. Uh, like really. Like, the horror elements seemed so disconnected. It's like two separate movies were made. One was a horror movie about artwork killing just uh, snobs, and the other movie was just snobs undercutting each other uh, to obtain um, sort of dark but easily marketable artwork. And uh, th that... That, I think, hurt the film, uh, because the artwork that comes to life is just, like, random nearby artwork. Uh, it isn't the art of the artist itself. There's only, there's only one, and it's, like, the final shot of the movie where R Rene Russo is, uh, Rene Russo is, uh, she's in her house, and she's looking at one of the paintings that was done by this, this guy, and it's uh, two shadows are approaching a woman and her cat sitting. They're like kind of sitting facing like this way. And you see the shadows in the, in the background, like almost like they're like coming towards them, they're, like looming over them. And like there's a, at the end of the movie, she's like sitting down and her cat comes and sits next to her. And there's sort of like a matching, like matching shadows. And I thought like that shot was cool. But no, nobody else's death, no, nothing in the movie matches up with the artwork of the guy. Like, he keeps showing his paintings, and they're, like, really, really well done. Like, it, it's sort of like, I, I sort of equate it to the Babadook, where if you watch the Babadook, the pop-up book for the Babadook is, like, really well done and really kind of creepy looking, but the actual, like, when you see him, he's just, like, a dude, and the dude is far less creepy, you know? That was kind of the same thing here. Um, like, there's a part where Jake Gyllenhaal's being stalked by this, like, robot. And it's like, because he went to an art exhibit, and there was the robot there. And he looked at it, and he's like, that's certainly a weird robot. And, um, 
so the robot stalks him at the end of the movie. And it's like, no. I mean, the, the robot wasn't done by this tortured artist. It was like, what's, the, what's even the point of having this, like, demonic artist who's made all this e these evil paintings that come to life and kill people if it's not even the evil paintings that are coming to life and killing people? Like, we, there's, like, no interaction between them. What is causing these other paintings to come to life? At least you could suspend your disbelief for his work and be like, okay, he put, like, his own, like, creepy, creepy torment blood into the ink and that's causing it to like come to life and you know screw with people but the fact that it's infecting like other artists work is kind of odd and it wasn't really well explained and I think it's at that point where you're like okay suspension of disbelief only goes so far you got to explain how some of the stuff works you know you, you can't just have like I didn't I didn't particularly care for the fact that all artwork was just coming to life to kill people because, I mean, shit, anything is art, so. I, I think the, the lack of bite of the horror elements really brought the film down. Uh, I think it could have and should have been a lot better. I wish it was. Um, I wouldn't recommend anybody, like, go out of their way to see it. Uh, I probably wouldn't watch it again for any real reason. It's, it's a shame. Like, I was hoping it'd be better. But, I mean, hey, the guy's name is Morph Wartortle, so that's, that's something, I guess.